G'day, I'm Anton. This is my first YouTube video. This is going to supplement content that I've got at my blog, anton.morovic.com or ammorrow.com for short. I've always been um, a computer programmer. Professionally for the last 15 years it's pretty much all that I've done. But I've always had um, a casual interest in electronics. And um, while you can see around me I've gathered a lot of equipment, um, I've never really put it to a lot of practical use. But hopefully now that's going to change. I've decided that uh, one of the best ways for me to learn a new skill is if I try and teach other people. So I figured that as I take on a project, if I shoot a short video and put it online, hopefully other people can benefit. And hopefully also the act of trying to explain it can help reinforce it for me. So, in this episode, I thought I would start small. I've got an old inkjet printer here which I found on the side of the road. So I'm going to tear it down and see what parts I can harvest. Let's get to it! The printer is a Canon Pixma MP180. Um, it has a little LCD down here. It has um, access to the, the cartridges and everything in there. Flatbed scanner, uh, multi-card reader, USB host so you can plug in a flash drive. Uh, and on the back it has a standard USB interface only um, and power supply. The reason that I'm wearing these incredibly fashionable goggles and gloves it's twofold. One is that, as I said, this print has been out in the rain for a while, so it's pretty filthy. Uh, and the other is that as I start to tear it apart, it's likely that there are going to be broken bits of plastic that fly out of it, because I'm not going to be especially graceful if things don't work out with a screwdriver. But the other reason is that I am going to try and turn this thing on and see whether or not it works. This is not an especially wise thing to do. I wouldn't recommend you try this at home because um, assuming that it's corroded inside or possibly there's even still moisture, you've got an electrical hazard on your hands. It could burn something out, um, or who knows, could even blow up. Power switch, nothing yet. Power button, and look at that. She lights up. Looks to me like this might be a little graphical LCD. Um, while it's got a character display here, you can see on the right hand side, it's got some full height um, graphics, so there's a good chance this is a dot matrix display, which would be pretty handy if we can salvage. Before I start attacking this thing, I'm going to turn it off. Definitely, definitely not safe to try and take apart any electronic equipment while it's plugged in, even if it's switched off. So, power point goes off, power cord comes out. Even then, there are still some electrical hazards inside. Um, for instance, large capacitors may store a charge, um, and that can be lethal. So, always play it safe. So where do we start? I'd say we just go for ripping off any particular loose plastic bits that come off easily and then see if we can start getting into it with a screwdriver. Let me get this power cord out of the way. Oh, and another thing is, I always recommend that you make sure you've got, um, a, say, a plastic tub or something on the side into which you can chuck the pieces you want to keep and maybe another one so that you can use it as a bin because there's going to be a lot of plastic garbage coming off this. Okay, here's one little piece that I've taken out so far. This is the uh, multi card reader board. Um, looks like it takes compact flash, probably uh, an SD card and maybe other things. I've taken apart another printer which has a similar kind of card reader and in fact I think a similar IC. Looks like we might have some differential pairs here or something which could indicate USB, not really sure. So that's the um, scanner flatbed and front control panel safely detached by FFC connectors and um, other little connectors. Uh, I'll put that aside and start attacking that later. Okay, so we're down to the ink cartridges here. Uh, I'm going to be careful when I try and take those out because they're likely to make a mess. Looks like you just push these ones down. Lift them out. Yeah, a little bit lucky, so make sure that whatever you're chucking them into as a bin is watertight. I don't think there's much good we can get out of these. Here's 
here's the main PCB. Don't know that there's much I can tell you about it. Um, we have the main processor. We have um, a flash ROM, uh, RAM, um, some other Texas Instruments part, which is probably related to the uh, driver circuit here, made up of um, some caps and in inductors. Uh, and that's basically it. On the back, there's not much. And um, I don't know whether it's practical to recycle much of this. Uh, if it were possible to reprogram it, then um, it, that might be quite handy, but who knows? Uh, I would say that it's probably much more trouble than it's worth. For reference, the, the main processor here um, is an 800411-012-A. Don't even know who, who made it. Here's where things start to get a bit more mucky and I start to look like I've murdered a clown. The the printers um, that uh, you tear apart will generally have um, some padding and so forth in them um, and other areas which are used for um, cleaning the, uh, the print heads so that when you first turn them on or if you go through a print cleaning cycle they will just bleed a lot of ink and it needs to be mopped up by something. So you have these which start off white and end up as you can see being almost black. Now in some cases what you will find um, is a clever little design where there will be a spring um, or some other little wire that just basically acts as a lock for holding in cogs and rods and other things like that. You will find that if you can just uh, lever it out of the way carefully then you should be able to just easily detach whatever it was holding in. Just like that. Similarly, you may find that when you have main rods like this and cogs and so on, that there's a little plastic lever here that you can pull out. Um, it has a little key that locks it down there. Rotate this to the right spot and this should take off the drive belt, should just pop out. Here's one of the motors um, from the, at least the bottom half of the unit. Um, there are two. There's a, another one here which I'll take out in a sec. When you unscrew these motors, make sure that you keep the screws that they came with because they're a perfect fit and will be very handy when you come to use them for something else. This is the carrier for the print cartridges and I'm not going to go to too much trouble to try and salvage anything out of that. There's not really anything in here that we can use. Maybe we can get these um, flat flex cables out. They were always handy to, to store a collection of different um, uh, pin counts and pitches. Um, that assumes, of course, that um, they're not soldered directly to the board and there's a good chance that they are, in which case, uh, I don't know, maybe hold on to them, you never know. And yes, as I suspected, they're soldered directly to the board. So we could try and desolder those or maybe just rip them off and maybe just keep the FFCs um, as spare for some future project, something that may need to be interfaced with that has that type of connector. Okay, so that's everything from the base of the printer except for the power supply, which is clipped in here. Some, some models of these printers um, make them very easily detachable so that from just going to the back of the printer you can pull them straight out. This one actually has a clip though, we have to leave her in and get that out. And then that comes out. Now, I don't know why they make these um, independent modular power supplies. Um, it doesn't appear to be so that it's um, country independent. Uh, I mean, this particular one takes an input voltage um, of um, 100 volts to 240 volts, so it'll work pretty much anywhere. Uh, and it has an output of 24 volts DC at uh, 1.2 amps. 
So um, we know that this powers up, it might be quite handy. Who knows, maybe it could actually be salvaged as some sort of basic bench supply. Right, it's time to start on the flatbed scanner and the control panel. Alright, so here's a little um, motor, stepper motor probably, and um, gearing mechanism which was used for uh, driving the, the scanner imaging head back and forth. Um, I'm not going to take that apart because it seems to run pretty smoothly and it might be handy to keep that gearing. Here is the imaging head which comes out of the scanner um, attachment. This um, is very similar to uh, another one that I pulled out of another printer. Um, it uses a flat flex cable interface. Um, the part number on the back there, I don't know if, if that will focus, there we go, is um, a QK1-3172 and there are some other part numbers on there as well. Um, so I don't know if it will be possible to find a data sheet for that. Um, I don't also know whether or not it uses um, uh, LED lighting um, or whether it uses um, cold cathode um, fluorescent tube. Okay, so there's what's inside the main control panel. We have the LCD which looks like it must have some sort of serial interface because it only has, oh, yeah, I don't know, maybe it's a parallel interface. Uh, it has about a dozen pins. Um, and this board here has its own 6 megahertz oscillator. Um, so, chip in the back must be a microcontroller which allows it to monitor all of the buttons, control the LCD, um, monitor a couple of sensors and um, interface through this cable here with uh, the main um, control board as well. Let's see what the haul is from this. Um, we've got a bunch of uh, ferrites, screws and springs, some go uh, cogs and other uh, gearing mechanisms, the um, main con uh, front control panel um, PCB which has a microcontroller on it, dot matrix graphical LCD which I'll try and remove later and see if I can find out more about it. might have a part number on there and I can get a data sheet for it. Scanner imaging head, a geared stepper motor, a pair of simple matched monitor, uh, motors, the power supply module, uh, the multi card reader board, the interface board to the um, print cartridges, main PCB, which may not be much use unless somebody has any idea how we might be able to reprogram it and put it to any good use. Couple of rods, which might not really be much good to be honest, I'll probably chuck these away. Um, this is um, not a smooth rod, which is kind of a shame. Um, none of these are. Um, in some units you can get um, larger 8mm or 9.5mm smooth rods which might be useful in a 3D printer but these are probably not going to be much use. This one for instance actually has screw holes in it uh, meant for mounting it so not, not much good as a smooth rod. Uh, three drive belts and so that's about it. Um, some printers you can actually get quite a lot more useful parts out of it. But this one, as is common for a lot of um, more modern printers, um, has really, really been optimised in terms of cost saving. So minimal parts um, and most of them um, somewhat specialised to this particular unit. Now, I've taken all of the electronic parts and I've um, wired them back up together more or less the way I think they went um, originally. So I thought I would see if I could power this on again and see what happens.
Again, this falls into the realm of what you should definitely not try at home because we are dealing with mains power here, even though it is being regulated. Um, so I'll hit the power button and see what happens. Oh, there's some light from the motors and the LCD still works. It's a scanner error. And either I haven't plugged the sensors back in correctly or they're just not being um, actuated the way that the, the main control board expects. But obviously there's still some life there. So um, if I couldn't otherwise get a part number off this LCD, which is often the case, then um, I could possibly try and do um, an analysis um, on the pins here and, and see how it works. So there you have it. That's it. Um, I didn't get as much out of this printer as what I'd hoped, but there are still a few interesting parts, and if you have any suggestions about what I might be able to do with them, please let me know. Likewise, if you've got any suggestions about how I can shoot videos differently, please let me know as well. Just drop something in the comments, and I'd be happy to check it out. Thanks again for watching, and catch you next time.